little video, and then we're going to have Mike and Caroline come up. It started getting red, and I noticed that it wouldn't heal over. When it wouldn't go away, Mike made an appointment with the dermatologist to have it checked out. And he comes in and he looks at it. He said, excuse me, I'd like to go get my colleague. And they didn't say anything in front of me, but I could tell that it was kind of serious. I could sense the fear. He called me on the phone and after the appointment, and he said that the doctor uh, said you need to have surgery right away to have that removed and wrote up a little note, and this is what it was. She calls me back very seriously. She says, Mike, it means that you have malignant neoplasm cancer. The next day, I'm coming to work. It's like 8.30 in the morning, and my cell phone rings. I answer the phone. This, I'm Dr. So-and-so. I diagnosed you with this yesterday. They just told me you canceled your appointment. You can't do that. I want you to know, I'm writing here down in my records that you're warned of this is a very deadly thing that you're dealing with. The tumor, it just started growing out as a tumor. And it would ooze and it would bleed and we're wrapping it in saran wrap. The tumor was just feeding off the blood in his body. His whole complexion was like gray. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mike Arthur. and Carolyn Hesch. Wow. I tell you what, I'm so glad you took pictures of that because of words just couldn't describe that. I remember I was making television one day and I was walking to go change shirts for the next program and I just walked by and they were editing his story and I saw the little tiny mark that was on his chest and I said boy that thing's terrible looking and they said look at this and then they went to that big one and I nearly fell over it was amazing and you have really inspired me Mike the way that you were a anyway I'll let you give the whole story but the way that you just were able to look beyond and what you felt and what you saw and operate in faith, that is exceptional. It had to be the supernatural power of God. Amen. So give us uh, the version here. We just gave a little tease. What really happened? How'd this happen? Uh, it started really uh, long before I any, ever had any symptoms. And it, it started with um, like, you know, you could say all the way back to my childhood. But really, I think the thing that really reinforce it was the church. And uh, I had learned a lot of, you know, bad doctrines. And then I got, became part of a church that was Grace and Faith Church. And, um, but they had this little thread of legalism that ran through all the grace and faith. And so in that process of really getting, shedding a lot of things in my life, um, you know, that were wrong. I, I used to be a very shy, timid person. I know that's hard for some of you to believe, but uh, I used to be very shy and timid and, and uh, I, I came to this fellowship and they shared with me about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. And uh, when they shared the part about boldness, I said, I don't care if I ever speak in tongues, I want that boldness, <laughs> you know? Amen. And uh, so, you know, I sat there in a chair most of the night and finally I just repeated what they said, but I received the boldness and it really changed my life. But along with that boldness, I became more and more, more involved with the church. And I even became an assistant uh, to the pastor, but I was very excited about the word. But along with uh, all of this excitement, I, re I never really got delivered of this fear of needing to be accepted. And so I was always on this edge on the inside. And uh, after I received healing from this, the, you know, through that process, the Lord showed me that that was the place the devil had in my life. And that he, he was slowly destroying me on the inside through this fear and, and wanting to be accepted and this desire to be, you know, um, 
not so much recognized, but just to, you know, be part of what God's doing. You know, I may inter, uh, interrupt for just a second because a lot of people will say, well, I could understand like Richard Waller mm -hmm. and his background and that being an inroad of, dev of the devil, but wanting to be accepted, yeah. being an inroad of the devil, uh, oh, yeah. most people it would give place to the devil. Amen. You know, it's like, you know, if the devil came to your door, knocked on the door and said, hi, I'm the devil. I'm here to ruin your day. You just slam the door in his face. That's right. But he doesn't do that. He says, hey, I, I got to honor one of another and Amen. seek not the honor that comes from God only. Amen. And so that was, uh, that was really the journey. Uh, that was the journey that led to my, really, the freedom. And, um, you know, uh, many people, they look at the sore on my chest. And, uh, you know, it went a few years. I went to my pastor and... And he'd seen a lot of miracles, you know, he believed and he saw many wonderful things happen. I had prayed for people, I had other deliverances in my life. And, uh, but you know, I kept getting prayed for and nothing would happen, you know. And, uh, but I knew this, this is one thing I did know and that's why I took a picture in the beginning, was I knew that I was healed by the stripes of Jesus. I knew the word and I knew that that's what the word said about me. And so, uh, you know, you've probably talked to a zillion people like this and everyone out there too. But uh, when the prayer didn't quote unquote work, you know, I, I looked in the word for other things and I saw herbs and I saw food and I saw nutrition. So, you know, Caroline could went testify. Whole route. <laughs> I went that whole route. I bought... I bought a whole library of natural healing books. I mean like, what, 100, 200 books. I read them, I marked them up, I studied them, it's, and I, go ahead. I was gonna say, instead of spending millions, of, or not millions, thousands of dollars on doctor bills, it was thousands of dollars on herbs and nutrition and supplements yep. and uh, the whole Yeah, thing. I felt like Julianne with the whole counter, you know, full. And so um, I went that route and uh, the point I think I really want to emphasize in this part of the testimony is that, you know, I knew God had the answer, but it won't, when it wasn't working out in my mind or out of my body like I thought I should, like, it, like I thought it should, I turned to the, the word and I used the word to justify my focus on the natural realm. And, uh, I, you know, I would, you know, read all this. And then our pastor was even teaching on it for the longest time about, you know, God created the herbs, you know, and if he wouldn't make them unless they were for your body. And, you know, that all has a place. Uh, but um, after going through that and trying all these herbs, and I mean, we had people that got words from the Lord and they would call us up and... Uh, you know, everything had to go through my pastor because I was like very committed to my pastor. You were in a real authoritarian type of relationship there. Where... Yeah, I was, but I can't blame him. Mm -hmm. See, I'm, I'm responsible for what I believe. That's very good. And so I was submitting myself to that and it was actually feeding the authoritarian part in him. Where if I would have just said, hey you know, <laughs> flipped him off, you know, once or twice. <laughs> you would have thought, I can't push him around like that. But anyway, I submitted to it in an unscriptural way. And, but all these people would go through there and you can tell the story about the, the herb tincture that they told me to take. Yeah. Uh, Caroline, you need, uh, in the video, it shows you had to basically take care of him, dress this thing, and it was yeah. uh, not I, I think I have part nurse in me. <laughs> But uh, definitely a caregiver uh, spirit there. Uh, there was one time that uh, one of the people in our fellowship had a, a word from the Lord, supposedly, of uh, Mike needing to take this tincture that we, I mean, we would buy the dry herbs and we'd buy the bottles of vodka and make the tinctures ourselves instead of spending the money to vodka? buy. Vodka? Yeah. yeah. It was, oh, it, it was the medium. Yeah. So I'd throw away the herbs and drink the vodka. <laughs> Just, you didn't. <laughs> but anyway, so she calls the pastor and says, I think Mike needs to be taking, um, I can't even remember, like a, a tablespoon of this tincture. Oh, no, it was ounces. Okay, ounces, ounces of this tincture every hour. Every hour. Um, and then he'll, you know, 
this will help him and he'll be recovering or whatever. Mm -hmm. So Mike's laying in bed and he's so, you know, sick with this and I'm feeding him coming in like with the timer every, I can't remember if it was a half hour, every every hour, hour, giving him ounces of this vodka made tincture and he's drinking it and laying back down on the bed. (laughs) And I mean, he was probably, yeah, he was just out of it. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm walking away each time as, you know, three or four or five hours go by and I'm doing this and he is, I mean, because he oh, yeah, was wasted I was... away and this alcohol was really getting to him also. And I'm thinking, I think I'm killing him more than helping him. So I called the pastor up and he says, well, then just stop giving it. Like, yeah. Well, thanks for letting me know I can stop, you know. But anyway, it was, uh, it's crazy. It was crazy. That's how deep we were into that, where wow. it was like something that should have been obvious to us. Yeah, you know, his heart rate's like one every uh, two minutes. And uh, should, what, what do you think? Should we keep taking it? You know, that's how far we were like on this, uh, wow. down, you know, down this road. And um, let me ask this question, because I know a lot of people that saw this will always ask this. Why didn't you just get that thing cut off? I asked him that many times. Yeah, she would say, why don't you just get to cut it off? Number one reason is I had no peace about doing that. And uh, the number two reason is what I'm sharing right now. And uh, that is through this journey as I'm going on and I'm uh, trying everything in the natural, you know, to the point where, you know, we're monitoring, you know, everything I eat. I'm, you know, no, I can't have this. I'm taking some... And then finally one day, it just, I just told her, I said, hey, look, this is not working. You know, it's not working. And I just said, you know, this is, I don't recommend this, but this is how I broke the fast. I said, I'm thinking to myself, what's the worst possible thing that I think I could eat? Go to McDonald's and get a fish sandwich. (laughs) That's what I told her. I said, go to McDonald's and get me a fish sandwich. So she went and got one and I ate it. And it was good. You know, I enjoyed it. And, uh, but it was like, that was, that was a little seed that started to divide me away from this performance in my heart that I thought I had to get all my ducks in a row. Even though I knew that I was healed by the stripes of Jesus, this one scripture tormented me. In James chapter 1, verse 8 and 7, that's how I read this, it says that a a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Well, see, what I thought that scripture was saying was that you got to get all your ducks in a row and then God will release healing to you. But what I discovered was that, no, what that saying is, when your mind is double or divided, you're not able to receive what God has already provided. He's not withholding. It's, you're the one that's like rejecting it by not accepting that with all your heart. And people might express this differently, but it doesn't matter if you know that by his stripes you're healed. If you think you've got to perform and be worthy to receive it, that just voids that because you are never going to measure up. Yep, never, never, never. So, go ahead. I was just going to say you are asking about why didn't he get it cut off. Another reason is that we were taught that uh, in John... um, Nine. Thank you. 931. Yes. <laughs> that God hears not sinners. And so um, we had been taught in this whole fellowship that if you're going to doctors, you'd be sinning. So we didn't want to sin any more than Mike supposedly was already yeah. sinning, which is why he was staying sick. Yeah. Oh, uh, we wow. didn't want to go to the doctor to get it cut off. That was kind of extreme. Yeah. yeah, very extreme. And um, what was I saying? I don't know. Okay. I'll start Sorry. there. Uh, No, that's okay. Um, So anyway, you know, once I broke the thing about the diet part of it, and I began to really see that, wow, this, it's, the issue is like my focus, I'm being double-minded. And uh, so I'm I'm going down this road, and uh, I shared this as healing school a little bit more in depth yesterday, but I got to this place where now I'm, 
I'm questioning everything because, um, you know, first of all, you know, I'm starting off with the confession, the rebuking, the commanding. You know, I did that, you know, till I was hoarse, you know. And folks, let me just encourage you. When you're talking to the devil and you change the octave in your voice, it, it really won't do anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and no matter how loud you yell, it won't make a difference. So it's just save your voice, okay? And, uh, but I found that out the hard way. But um, so anyway, uh, I'm trying to shorten it up a little bit. But uh, so during this, this whole time, um, I'm getting to a place where I'm like, hey, this is just not working. But yet I'm afraid to depart from that because now this performance thing that's in my heart wasn't just to please my pastor. It's to please the ultimate authority in my life. And so I'm, I'm constantly trying to keep my ducks in a row. She used to like, look at me like a deer in the headlights when I would, my family would call, which I never told them what was going on. And I'd get on the phone and it took every bit of strength to talk normally. And I get off the phone and, you know, like, you know, practically collapse. And she'd like, look at me, but that's how deep that performance was in my heart that I could not come across like I was a normal person, <laughs> you know? Yeah, not doing well. And so I get down this road and, um, and I'm just like, you know, I've, I never once got out of the word. I was continually in the word. I'd have the, uh, there were some CDs I loved listening to over and over. And what's funny looking back is those CDs were actually ministering the very thing that I needed, but I'm trying to, you know, do it by performance. So finally, one day I get to this point and I'm, uh, I read this scripture, Matthew 21, 22. And um, I'm reading it, what things soever you desire when you pray, believing you receive. And the thought came to me to read that backwards. And I do that a lot with the word. I just, sometimes I see things better backwards. And I read it like this. I read, if you have received, you have believed. And you know, it was just like the decision that Raquel uh, mentioned. They weren't telling me I needed a heart transplant, but in my mind, when I heard that, to me, belief, if I wasn't believing, I'd never get healed. But even though that's a true statement, that healing comes through belief, belief had become a performance in my life. And so at that moment, you know, I was like, it was a crossroad for me. Like either I admit I'm not believing and be free or stick with what I'm doing uh, to the very end. You know what I mean? And so in that moment, I just said, hey, I haven't received and I'm, not, I'm just not believing. And Andrew, I felt so much peace in that moment. I felt free. You know why? Because Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Even though the truth was, I'm not believing. <laughs> truth is truth. Even the if truth it's, you're is not believing. truth. But you know what that truth allowed me to do? It freed me to believe the right way. And then in that moment, I was like, well, I'm going all in here. And I said, Lord, I guess I don't know how to believe. And you know, he reminded me of, uh, you know, my salvation experience and how it was just so easy that I just accepted something I couldn't see, feel, hear, touch, or taste. And I just accepted it because that's what the word said, you know, and I was, you know, a little kid back then, but, you know, and then later on in my life, I got to a place where I Am I saved? Am I not saved? Because I had gotten into the world and, you know. Let me make a comparison here to help people understand this. But some people, you know, the Bible says you're supposed to love your mates. You're supposed to do this. First Corinthians 13. Here's how love it. And they try and love out of themselves. That's right. And then they just come to a place. God, I can't do this. Oh, God, if I'm ever going to love this person, you're going to have to do it. And all of a sudden, this Amen. supernatural love comes. So you were trying to do all the faith stuff, and it wasn't working. And when you gave up is when you started believing. Yep. Amen. Well, 
I was trying to work the word instead of the word, which is spirit and life, work its perfectness in me. And uh, so when I got to that, when I asked the Lord that, this scripture came to my mind uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, where Paul said, I am determined not to know anything among anyone save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And you know, it's like in that millisecond, I knew exactly what the Lord was saying. He was saying, you've actually taken your focus off of everything you actually need. And, but here I am, an assistant pastor to the church. I'm ministering to other people, you know, uh, in the word all the time. It was like, it was almost like a disconnect, but I knew exactly what he was saying. That the freedom that I just experienced in that moment by admitting the truth, that truth was all wrapped up in what Jesus had done and accomplished for me. And so for the next five months, this was seven and a half years into my journey. So for the next five months, I was free just to believe the word now. Because I didn't have to perform it. I didn't have to work it. I didn't have to do anything. And so during that, that five months, I was in the word constantly. But it was almost like I had a new Bible because I was starting to see all these things that were uh, requiring my performance that Jesus had already accomplished it. Amen. You know, I had certain places in my Bible that I intentionally put spit on it, stuck them together so they'd all turn as one page because <laughs> I couldn't handle reading them. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was like, I can't get over that bar, so I'm not even going to go near it. You know, and I'd just turn it all as one page. Mm. And uh, Psalms 119 one of the most beautiful Psalms in the, in the word of God, but I could never read it because I felt like the bar was up here. And each time I would read it because you're supposed to read it, I would read it. I would feel like the bar went up another notch, you know? And so during that five month period, man, things were just, I was starting to like relax inside. I was starting to be free inside. And, and we got to a place where, where um, we had this discussion one night, and, and um, this was like in January, and I said, you know, now I'm sharing with her all along the way. This is funny because during this performance, seven and a half years, she would come home from work, and I'd say, honey, I found the answer. And I'd quote her the scripture, and I'd tell her, you know, but I'm free now, you know, I'm healed, it's over with. And then, you know, I'd either start bleeding really bad or, or I'd feel if I'd have even a really bigger dip and I'd be like, oh, you know, I feel like I failed again. Man, there's people that are relating to what you're Oh, yeah. About. Anybody that's had been sick over, you know, 15 minutes is wondering what they did that's not letting it, you know, come forth. And so, um, so during the next five months, she's like seeing this difference in me. You know, I'm not saying that anymore. And uh, so finally I get to this place and we're sitting down and talking. I'm saying, you know, honey, I said, I am healed. Jesus did it all for me. I'm completely healed. But you know what? I don't understand at all why I still have these symptoms. You know, and I, I, I'm still experiencing, you know, uh, all the things that went along with it. Because by that time it wasn't just, I don't think it was just something out here. It was actually things like were you know, going wrong on the inside. Definitely you not know. working your body. So yeah. it was more than just that tumor. It was yeah, affecting your body. Yeah, I lost body. like like 20 pounds. You know, I used to be pretty fit and I like to work out and and uh, yeah, that, that all went to pot, you know. <laughs> but um, anyway, so um, I lost all this weight and everything. But anyway, we're having this conversation about uh, getting set, you know, like what's the deal? But this time when I prayed... We said, let's ask the Lord. I didn't ask him what I needed to do. I said, Lord, we just need some understanding here. You know, is there something you want to show me? Uh, what, you know, is there, you know, what's going on? I'm, I'm content to just keep on this road that I'm on because I'm free. Jesus has done everything. And so um, anyway, uh, long story short. Did we get the uh, CD from Bobby? 
Yeah. Yeah, it was during this time. Yeah, it's during this time that our friend gave us uh, your teaching on You've Already Got It. And at that point, um, I'm surprised I listened to it because I was really getting pretty fed up with this uh, fellowship that we were in that was kind of falling all apart and uh, wasn't sure who to believe and what to listen to or whatever. And so I was listening to it one day at work during lunch and uh, Mike was kind of adamant at that point, I'm not going to listen to anyone other yep. than what the word says. And so uh, listening to your teaching and then what Mike had been sharing with me also, it was just like, it, yes, um, reinforced. And it was like, Mike, you have got to listen to this. This teaching is awesome. You know, Jesus has already done it for us. So yeah. that's why so, you should be healed. Yeah, it was kind of cool how the Lord was like ministering to her and at the same time ministering to me in the word. Because I had sworn off uh, ever listening to another man again in my life. I said, nope, you know, I'm not going to listen to another man in my life. But not in the sense was that I'm not going to listen to teaching. It's I'm not going to listen to a man that's doing the teaching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so anyway, we sat down and had this conversation and she was already on the same page. It was, it was kind of cool. And uh, so... Uh, I had a dear friend in Christ. I love him. And uh, he was like a mentor to me. And uh, so anyway, he came over, shared this dream, and uh, told me, um, you know, told me there was one more thing I needed to do. And uh, boy, when he said that, I was completely free from this need to do anything. So when he said that, I knew it was the devil. I knew exactly this is the devil speaking to me. And I shared yesterday about how I met Big Mike that day, you know, this guy that stood up on the inside of me. And, and I just said, no, no. You know, I didn't say that to him. I was polite because I loved him. And I, you know, go now, <laughs> you know, exit him out the door. But, you know, I just became uh, very emotional inside. I didn't know what, to, I'd never experienced that indignation, but I'm walking, you know, after I let him out, I'm walking to my study and I'm, I'm not a real emotional person, you know, uh, not like Carrie, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm like, I'm, I'm crying. I'm like inside feeling like, you know, I could bite a nail in half, but not, <laughs> not angry, but just like I got this peace thing going on and I'm walking back to the, and I, this thought came to my mind, like, that's how Jesus felt. When he was walking, getting ready to go into that temple, you know, he'd gone there since he was old enough uh, to go because it was required by every male to appear three times in Jerusalem. So he's growing up in his father's teaching him daily about, you know, the temple and what it means that he's actually the temple. And so imagine growing up for all those years and not having any authority to do anything about those money changers. And so now he's baptized. He's received his position. That he's the priest now. And he's walking. Can you see him just picking up like see some leather straps? Picking them up. And he's just like braiding them together. And I got this picture of me walking back to my bedroom. And I'm thinking this is how Jesus felt. You know, and so I, I get back in there and she comes in and she says, Mike, that's the answer to our prayer. The Lord was showing you the one other thing, thing you, you needed, needed to, do. to do. And I said, Caroline, that was the devil. <laughs> and I, yeah, she's like, whoa, back like this. I said, I don't have to do a bleepity bleep thing. I don't have to. Did you say bleepity bleep? No. He, he swore. I, I, never, <laughs> I never heard him swear before in our yeah. 20 years of marriage or whatever it yeah. was. And uh, I just said, I don't have to do a bleepity bleep thing. You know, the spirit can inspire you to swear. <laughs> and uh, so. I said, I don't have to serve God another day in my life, and I'm healed. Amen. See, that was the bondage. That was the root that all of this sickness grew out of. Man, that's awesome. You know, being an introvert by nature, some people don't believe that about me, but 
I know exactly what you're talking about because one of the things of an introvert is you don't exert yourself. You're That's always right. holding back. You are afraid of offending people. And man, when you rose up and even your mentor and you said, that's the devil, you broke. That's that right. Bondage. And I that's when you're healing manifest. Yeah. It was over. Yeah. Now, this is the point I wanted to make. I tried everything in the natural, everything, you know, and I was diligent. I'm not a slacker. And uh, I was diligent about those things. And uh, I was diligent to bondage as well to the point of where it almost killed me but you know what happened in that moment I was a healed person I knew that I was healed I didn't understand it I didn't have like well of course you know but I knew I was free I knew that it was over with that it was done and from that day forth the sickness had no more connection to me None whatsoever. And it just started to go away. Now, if it was just a physical problem, that would have never happened. Mm -hmm. There was a spiritual root to that sickness and disease that couldn't be cured by pruning the tree. I pruned my tree a million times, cut all the fruit off of it, chopped it off, you know, left a stump in the ground, but it kept growing back. But that day, I drove out the money changers in the name of Jesus, that they had no more place. And, and what was sustaining the life of the sickness and the disease was that agreement. And when that was broken, it couldn't be there anymore. Man, that's profound. It could not be there anymore. So how long before the physical reflected what had taken place in the spirit? Well, immediately I experienced a change in this sense was... I was no longer sick in my mind. Mm -hmm. I, I could see that different, that change in him right away too. When he said, that was the devil. And it's just like, okay. And I kind of <laughs> left the room and let him be by himself, whatever was going to go on. But I, I could see a difference in him spiritually. His whole countenance changed. Um, and then, we, I mean, he still had every other symptom. Although I think you started gaining some strength back. Oh um, yeah. And this is another, that's a good point. Thanks for saying that. The peace that I received was also energizing me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like uh, I, I... Fear drains you. It does. Peace. I teach a lot about the rest. And people will ask you, because they think rest is being inactive on a couch with a remote in your hand. You know what I mean? But I said, no, rest is the exact opposite. When you believe, it empowers you to cooperate with that energy that's within you through the spirit. Otherwise, it's just your effort. That's what makes you tired. You know what I mean? And uh, so I just began to feel that like energy from the inside. And, uh, you know, the devil had no more place. It was like, that was it. Just like, you know, it was over. When Jesus ran out the money changers, you know, he was by himself. Okay, he was far outnumbered, just like me. I was far outnumbered by the symptoms in my body. But one agreement with what God has already done for you in Christ and resting in that is greater than the whole world coming against you. So once you had seen it on the inside, you could still see this thing on the outside. Did it, did it affect you any or was... was was it over? You, you know, I, I, t oh, I was just going to say, that's why like two weeks later when we're still having to dress oh, it yeah, and wrap funny. it and everything, um, two weeks later, that's when I saw that it was actually getting smaller. It took fewer paper towels to wrap it or whatever. And I told him, I said, Mike, this is getting smaller. And he responded with, it has no other way to go. So it's just like he knew Man, that he couldn't awesome. remain because he was healed now. So it might take some time for the body to recover and for that tumor to disappear. Um, just like you're imagining all, the, all those years that he was going through this, that, well, he'll wake up someday and it'll just be on the bed sheet yeah, or something. Yeah. And, you know, it didn't happen that way, but the body just had to take some time to recover. But the, the connection, that spiritual connection that was feeding the tumor and keeping it alive was no longer there. So it just slowly shrunk away. 
Yeah. That's powerful. I tell you, there's people watching this, Mike, that they're saying all the things, they got it, but they oh. don't have that revelation that it's done by Jesus and you aren't making it happen. That's right. And because of that, it would, they wouldn't say it this way, but they're feeding that sickness. Oh, yeah, you, you definitely are. And this is like to add what Caroline said was for, I don't know, eight years, part of the double-mindedness was I'm looking to the natural to confirm what I'm seeing in the word. Man, that's a formula for no success. That's awesome. And uh, like one scripture that, you know, I love is in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, where it says, we look not at the things that we can see. Think about that for a second. We don't look at the things that we can see. Why? Because they're just temporary. But this used to boggle my mind. But we look at the things we cannot see. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. You have to do it through what Christ has done for you. You have to do it through the Spirit. And uh, so that like became a revelation to me, like, so, you know, I got this on my body. It's not mine. It doesn't belong to me. I felt like I was wearing somebody else's clothes, you know, and, and one day I was just going to throw them off, but it was no longer connected to my heart. In other words, for eight years, I was continually monitoring whether I was free or not by what was going on in my body. Man, that's awesome. And then, but once you know that Jesus is enough, you, you don't have to go there anymore. It's like, oh, really? It's just like, you know, the analogy about, you know, if you got $100,000 in your bank account, when you spend 100 bucks, you don't, you don't care. You know, you're not concerned. And, uh, but when you get your eyes in the spirit and you see that there, you can never overdraw your account in the spirit then you don't worry about what the demands are because the spirit has already met them in Christ. And, uh, it's powerful. It There's is. so many people that just, it takes a revelation from God. You can say this until you're blue in the face, but until a person sees it for themselves, it, it just doesn't work. Amen. We're way over time, but man, this has been powerful. Oh, wow. wow. This yeah. has been yeah. powerful. Amen. Amen. I would like you to take the revelation that God has given you and just speak to the people that are watching and Amen. pray with them and help them to receive that same revelation. Amen. 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 You know, um, this is what's on the inside of me. Um, you know, you might be hearing the word. Does it matter? Can I look in that camera? You can look at any camera you want. Okay. It doesn't matter what word you have said or haven't said at all. Uh, what God has done for you in Christ is already complete in you. And uh, I just want you to know that that is already done. What you do or don't do is not going to affect that in the sense of your efforts. It's not going to change that at all. But what's going to make the difference is the same thing that happened to me, is letting what you do know that Jesus has done is enough for you. So if I may, I'm just going to stand up. I want everyone in Jesus name to do this on the inside. I want you to stand up. You might just have heard today that Jesus is your healer. Well, that's just going to be information to you. If you're looking at your body, waiting to see something to happen. So I want you to stand up right now on the inside or on the outside or both and just say, I don't have to do you fill in the blank. <laughs> Anything. Because Jesus has already done it. And I receive that. I just accept that. It is done. It is finished. It is mine. And I, in Jesus' name, assure you that you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. It is done. You're not required to do one more thing. Jesus did it all. And the next time you feel like you got to monitor it or look at it or, or evaluate it, just say, no, no, it's already been done. I don't have to do anything. It is done. It is finished. Amen. It's finished for you in Christ. Amen. 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 Man, that's awesome.
Man, what a great way to wind up all of these testimonies. You just summarized so much. 